came out to look for Sasquatch up in an uh, area that has historical accounts of Sasquatch being sighted and also looking for some of the many native fish species, especially Dolly Varden and pretty unique fish that will probably be a lot easier to find than Sasquatch, of course. But, you know, I always, I always tell people, you know, let's say theoretically I had never caught a steelhead, um, but I heard stories of other people catching steelhead. I'm not gonna immediately assume that there's no steelhead just because I haven't caught one. So, you know, I think it's, it's kind of the same thing, right? Luckily, I've got Masha with me. She's a good squatching dog. And uh, I think, uh, you know, with, with her help, you know, we'll, we'll give, it a, give it a good shot. Anything's possible. This is my first Sasquatch hunt as, a, as an adult. Um, and I'm along for the ride. <laughs> My name is Bridget Moran. I work for American Rivers. I do conservation work for in the Puget Sound and Columbia River basins. To have the opportunity to try and protect rivers for the rest of my life, and you know, I think that's a good way for me to give back to uh, everything they've done for me. I'm also a volunteer with my local Trout Unlimited chapter, and my chapter is putting on an eDNA study in conjunction with the U.S. Forest Service. So we take water samples to see if there are traces of DNA in the sample, and then that gets sent off to the lab where they amplify the DNA a million times, and then it's run through a, like a test chip to, to determine whose DNA is actually present in the sample. Until 1980, the American Fisheries Society uh, only recognized bull trout and Dolly Varden as the same species. And then in 1980, they were delineated as two separate species with two different, you know, behavior patterns, life histories, and ha habitat ranges. Dolly Varden are at the very southern end of their range here in Puget Sound rivers. That's kind of why we're trying to get a better understanding of where they are in the southern range of their habitat. If we don't know that Dolly Varden are present in a stream, they're not going to get managed. So apparently, uh, Bridget brought some uh, some fancy uh, newfangled uh, testing devices that she's gonna um, be showing off. And you know, I've, I've got a, a few tests of my own that I'm gonna that I'm gonna be doing um, that are a bit more squatch related. I think we might have a good sample here. Possible Sasquatch uh, uh, urinary sample. Um, I've got the tester here. Yeah, you can see it's got a S, S here for Sasquatch. T for try again. And C, I think C means confirmed and it, it looks like we're uh, almost confirmed. There's a little line there. I think a line is good. I think a line, I think we want a line. I'm gonna have to take this back to some specialists to sort of verify the results basically, but I, I think that this is a, that this, this might be a breakthrough. These stories go back hundreds, maybe thousands of years. You know, can you, can you deny a story like that just outright? I don't know, if, I don't know if you can. There's a lot of people out there that uh, are very convinced that they have seen Sasquatch or seen signs of Sasquatch and uh, who's, uh, who's to say there's not something to that? I have seen a lot of stuff that I couldn't explain. First of all, when you're in those, you know, forests, like the northwest deep old growth forest, the light is so dappled and the, the aura of mystery is so great that you see all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, my name's Eric Burge, with a Robert in the middle for my dad. I am a, right now I'm a retired backcountry trails worker who is a writer. <clears throat> Coworker and I were camped down on the Stahican, and we've been down there probably a couple weeks doing trail work, uh, fishing. A lot of dollies down there actually. Well, there's a bunch of bridges. Uh, one of the bridges is a cable extension, and you have to put it on and take it off. 
part, it's a trail crew job, you know. For the end of the season, you go in, you roll it up, pack it in, and then early in the season, you go out and put it out again. So we had just finished that task. We put out the bridge. We were coming out and we were hiking out to Highway 20. It's like a 15 mile hike from where we were up the single track. You know, early on, you have to cross that cable bridge. And we were coming upon that cable bridge uh, in the morning and looked across. It's probably 100 feet across. I thought we saw a bear that was just kind of sitting there, you know. And so it was kind of a standoff. We're like, oh, that bear either wants to come over here or we need to get over there. Made a, a plan that we were going to scare it off. And we just started kind of going across the bridge, making noise and woo-hoo-hoo. You know, get out of the way, we're coming through, trail crew. As we get closer and closer, <laughs> we realize that this thing is not a bear. And it stands up and grabbed the bridge and gave it a shake, which is it's all on wire. And we both got bucked off the bridge. But fortunately, it was at a, a time of the year, it was so early in the season that it was snow down there. There was only a little channel of the river. And so we landed on the snowpack and we just went, we decided to go up the other side of the river. So we just left that side to the creature and we took off up the other side. By the time we got to that first juncture, we just camped for the night and it was a spooky night. Didn't see Sasquatch today, but you know, I'm not uh, like I was saying. You know, just because you just because you don't catch a steelhead doesn't mean there's not a steelhead there. So I feel like you know, I'm, it's just like searching for Sasquatch. You just gotta get back out there, get your reps in, and uh, keep after it. Well, with the state of our salmon fisheries today, seeing those salmon in the creek yesterday was almost like finding Sasquatch for me. Like you said, I think they're almost mythical status at this point. And to see that those were wild Chinook spawning in there too is pretty, pretty magical. Well, Dolly Varden and Sasquatch are kind of canaries in the coal mine. Um, they're indicators of ecosystem health. Uh, Dolly Varden need the coldest, cleanest water, um, more so than most other trout species. So, you know, as, as our climate changes and more headwater habitat is lost due to logging and forest fires and development, um, it's going to be really important for us to know where these fish are and how they behave so that we can best protect them going forward. If we lose Dolly Varden habitat, we lose Sasquatch habitat. So we gotta protect, <laughs> we gotta protect Sasquatch, right? We gotta protect Sasquatch habitat, we gotta protect Dolly Varden habitat. And, yeah, the good and, news is... And Dolly Varden, of course, there. of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good news is, it's the same habitat. Yeah. yeah. Two birds, one stone. Yep. Yeah but we won't kill them.
That's right. Okay. Neither of them, right? We'll the save we'll save two birds with one stone. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat>